We've got a demonstration here today with this nice string here, all right, this nice piece of rope. And um, some people call it the number line demonstration. And you're kind of forced to teach math in your chemistry class because sometimes the students actually forget the math that they learn. I know maybe yours don't, but mine sometimes would. Sometimes between going from math class to my class, things would leak out of their brains in the hall. And they'd come in, and I'd have to fill it up again. And really, this is not a, uh, um, a line. It's a line segment, because a line goes to infinity, and I don't have that much rope. I like this demonstration because it shows what makes a good demonstration. There's a, there's a lot of reasons for doing demonstrations, and one is you have to choose the right kind of demonstration. And what makes a good demonstration? One that fits the topic. And I said, this one's going to be on math, because I have to teach that. One that catches the student's interest. One that shows the concept clearly. And this is one you can tell them, they can see in the book, perhaps, they can talk about it theoretically, but if they see it and they get their hands on it, that's a good thing. One that is visible, and this will be visible. And this fits the criteria that Henry Bent talked about. So we have a quote over here, and it says, when something happens in the lab, or in the math book in this case, they never know what's happening. With demonstrations, you can explain it, the chemistry, or in this case, the math, when it happens. They can really see what's happening. So let me give you a little safety tip. We're using string or rope. Don't trip on it. Don't get hung up on it. And don't fall for that last line that I just gave you. I know if you're teaching physics, you can relate this to string theory, but I'm not going there because I'm not sure that's true. So this is what's called the number line. And here we have zero, and here we have one. And I have two volunteers here. And again, get students involved. You can get them up there. Um, they'll remember this. You're saying, they don't need goggles in this case. This is a number line pinner on our device. It has another name in the old days. You probably don't know. It's a solar clothes dryer. All right. So where do you think you will put number two? This is your job. Now, I ask for volunteers in my class, and you know, most kids come up, right? I'll take two. I think I can figure this out. Finally, something in this class that I understand. All right, there, we've got two. Let's see if the ropes. Yes. And you, sir, can you do three? Give it a shot. All right, so we're going to put three up. Now, this deals with powers of 10 exponential notation, something they should know, but don't necessarily really grasp. So I'm going to give you 10 to the first. Where would you put that on this line? So this requires them to think about what 10 to the first means and gives them some perspective. Sure, that, that's a good answer. That's excellent. And you're going to get 10 to the second. <laughs> You may have to puzzle about this one a bit. 10 to the second. And that's, a, that's fine. That's what, exactly what I want. And then you have that special kid, 10 to the third. You won't be back for 15 minutes. <laughs> and that real special kid, like 10 to the eighth or something, and they won't be back all semester. That's a good thing. So we're not going to put 10 to the third up because they're going to have to go to some other building. So we're going to ignore that one. That's easy to do. Now, the one that gets math teachers. I have burned AP calculus teachers with this one. And students, 50% of the students, easily miss this one. And I taught in a good school with very bright math kids, Naperville North High School. <laughs> These two are joke. Why don't you put this one up? I'm going to see where she puts that, where the naive learner would put that. It's 10 to the minus 1. OK, she has put it where 50% of the people will put it. And of course, I've primed her to put it there. Because I wanted her to make that mistake that cal AP calculus teachers have made. Because 10 to the minus 1 is really what? 1 tenth. And it should go 
right next to this one, just about, to the zero. So I primed her to do that, by the way. So she was, because I wanted to see exactly what would happen. How about 10 to the minus 2? Since we need to speed this up, now 10, let me see what, this, this is going to be 10 to the, this is just 10. I'm going to give you that. And you can think about that, where 10 would go. Yeah, 10 to the minus 2, if you could move, Scott, is between 0 and 10 to the minus 1. It's 1 hundredths. And 10 is the same as 10 to the first. And this is an easy one. What would there, where would this one go? It would go under 1. That's right. It's the same thing. So it is an easy one. So this is the number line. Um, it gives the students a concrete way of learning about exponential notation in a way that they can actually see it and get a feel for it. I am serious. Check it out. Get an administrator in and see if they don't miss that. The math department head, for example, and don't tell them they made the mistake, by the way. I did not, tell that, I did not correct that person because they would have not been a happy camper. One last thing. There's a wonderful movie it actually used to be on film. You know, the projectors, most of you aren't old enough to have used the film projector, called Powers of Ten. If they have that in video format, DVD format, use it. It's about eight minutes long. It starts in Chicago on, a, on Lakeshore with somebody's hand, and it goes up showing Powers of Ten and comes back down to the molecular level showing Powers of Ten. It's on the web, too, for free now, I understand. You can Google Power of Ten. Try it different ways, and there's several different versions of the movie. But if you can get the movie, the real movie, that starts in Chicago, it's fabulous. I've watched it for 30 years, and I was mesmerized every time I showed that. It fits in wonderfully right after you've done this. Okay, thanks. And I'm glad none of you got hung up on the concept here. Thank you.